So the oxidizer is an iron removal system, iron and manganese. Typically iron, um, when iron is present in the water, typically it will be what we call clear water iron. It means that the iron is dissolved in the water, you don't see it. To remove it, uh, one method to remove it is to oxidize the iron and to make sure that it is converted from dissolved iron into insoluble iron. So from a dissolved particle, it becomes a physical particle that you can filter out by means of a filter media. Now, in order to oxidize dissolved iron or manganese, what you need is two things. First of all, you need sufficient pH. pH needs to be at a certain level, but very important for the oxidation, you need something to oxidize the iron. It could be chlorine or ozone. But the most common way to do it, the most simple way to do it, is to inject or to add air. Air is a good oxidizer. Other manufacturers, what they typically do is they add an, an air injection system in front of the iron removal filter. So it could be a compressor, a venturi, something like, uh, like that. In our case, we added the air injection system inside of the tank. Now the system is in service, and so in service we have an air pocket in the top section of the tank. When the water comes in, as it does now in service, it enters the tank in the top, it comes in contact with the compressed air, and it gets super oxygenated, so very high uh, concentration of dissolved oxygen. The dissolved oxy oxygen will oxidize the dissolved iron into insoluble iron, and the berm media, the filter media, will remove the, the insoluble iron from the water. What we do when we backwash, when we backwash, so normally it will backwash every three, four days, depending on the water usage. But when we backwash, the first cycle, in the first cycle, the system goes into backwash, which means that the water goes down through the riser tube, enters the tank in the bottom, and starts to backwash the filter media. Now the air pocket, the air that is trapped inside of the, the, the tank, escapes, is released through the drain. So at this moment, there's no air in the tank anymore. Of course, we want air in the tank during the service cycle, so what we are going to do in the second cycle of the regeneration, in fact, it's a little bit like a softener. In the second cycle, a softener draws or sucks brine. In our case, we are sucking in air. So at this moment, water goes through the injector, the injector creates a vacuum, the vacuum sucks in, sucks in the air, the water plus air enters the tank in the top, goes down, through the riser tube to the drain. But what will happen is that the air, the air will not go down through the, the air stays in the top section of the tank. And that's what you're gonna see in a minute. You'll see that the water level starts going down because the tank is being filled with air. <coughs> Here it's coming. You see now the water level goes down. And so normally when, when it does an automatic regeneration, we leave it in air suction cycle for about 25 to 30 minutes and typically the water level will go down to about 50% of the height of the tank. We're not going to wait that long, it's not really necessary, but I'll leave it for another minute. So now the air pocket in the tank is expanding, it's becoming bigger and bigger. And do you have it for 35 Sorry? minutes? I have to check the exact yeah, settings, okay, but it's, uh, no, no, no. I can check. Ten minutes. Uh, no, no, no. The air suction cycle is longer. The well, air suction minutes. is. Um, oh no, you're right. Ten and fifteen minutes. On the big one, it's fifty. Yeah, you're right. Oh. Okay. We change it apparently. I should talk to Ruth. Thank you. So you see the, the air pocket is expanding. I'll just let it go back to service now. Normally it takes a bit longer.
<laughs> so now it's back in, in service. What will happen is when we put pressure on the system. Here. The air pocket is being compressed because air is, you can compress air. Water, you cannot compress it. Now, because we didn't leave it in air section long enough, but normally the air pocket will be something up to here. But as soon as we take water, you see that the pressure is to a certain degree is released. So here you can clearly see your, your air pocket in the tank. And so now it's, as I showed you in the beginning, the service cycle. The water comes in, it's super oxygenated, oxidation of your uh, dissolved iron through the filter media and out to the, to the outlet and it's, it's filtered. So that's the, the oxidizer. Now I told you that two things are important for iron removal. You need air, you need something to oxidize. In this case we use air. But the other thing which is very important, iron removal, preferably you have a pH of at least seven, but preferably even a bit higher, seven and a half. For manganese, even higher, eight and a half, uh, the age of eight to eight and a half. Now typically, where will you have uh, iron and manganese? It's in well water. If you have a private well, you may have iron or manganese in the water, and very often you will also have a problem with low pH. So if you install an oxidizer for uh, iron removal, you have to make sure that the pH is high enough. If it's not high enough, you can use a pH neutralizer. How does the pH neutralizer work? Well, inside we have what we call a self-sacrificing media which means it's a filter medium that dissolves in, in the water to increase the pH. The media can be two, two types. We have calcite, which is calcium-based, or we have corosex, and corosex is magnesium-based. Now, we will never use corosex only. If we use corosex, it's going to be a blend, 70% calcite, 30% corosex. The advantage of corosex, the magnesium-based material, is that it's much faster acting. It's more aggressive. It increases the pH more much faster, more aggressively. Because it's self-sacrificing, it also means that the level of filter media will go down after time. So from time to time, the end user needs to check the level. He can easily do it with a flashlight because it's a transparent tank and just refill it when necessary. To refill it, he doesn't have to remove the valve. On the pH neutralizer, we have the special tank with the dome hole. So he can just refill filter material through the dome hole without having to uh, take the valve off. That's the pH neutralizer. It will increase the hardness too. It will increase the hardness too. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, I don't know by heart. I can calculate if you want. But I don't know by heart. Five. Yeah, something like certainly not twenty the German degree. It also depends if you increase pH from three to eight. It's something different. But typically it will be from five, five and a half to seven, seven and a half, and then it's a couple degrees. But I can I can give you the exact figures. And uh, Roman is asking if it's possible to over increase the pH. Let's, let's say with calcite, typically no. So calcite has the tendency to raise the pH to 7, 7.5 seven and, and then it stabilizes. Seven, seven and a half only? Yes, calcite 7 to 7.5 seven neutral. Yes. Normally calcite is uh, neutral. With corosex, if the water is stagnant, if the water stays in the tank for a while, the pH can increase much higher. So for manganese, you usually use corosex. Yes, uh, calcite corosex, which we call the pH neutralizer XL. Yes. A... And then we have the null nitrate and the multimix. In fact, the null nitrate works like a water softener. Can I ask big question? Sorry? Big question. Can I ask big question? Yeah? How flow? So the low nitrate effect, it's a softer, but with the, the difference is that the resin that we use inside, of course, it's not to remove calcium and magnesium, it's to remove nitrates. So it's going to go... But it's the possibility to mix the uh, onion with the yes. and will be softener and also... In this case, a softener uses the sodium portion of your brine, it's calcium magnesium which is ex exchanged for sodium. In case of nitrate, it's, it uses the chlorides, so it's anions. Yeah.
it's not plastic. But it, it, it functions, it also regenerates, just like a water softener with, with normal uh, sodium chloride, with regeneration salt. But the difference is that with a softener, the sodium portion is used, and with a no nitrate, the chloride portion is used. So that's the difference. What's important when you use, uh, in case of uh, nitrate removal, is that you use a, a resin which is highly nitrate selective. What does it mean? If you don't use uh, nitrate selective resin, the resin will start to remove nitrates, but when, once the resin is saturated with nitrates, if there's also sulfates present in the water, the sulfates might start to push the nitrate off the saturated resin, which is called nitrate dumping. So if you don't use the proper resin, you might have a higher concentration of nitrate at the outlet than on the inlet. So that's dangerous. It's what, what's being called nitrate dumping. In our case, we use the Lanxess resin, which doesn't have any, which doesn't have uh, nitrate dumping. So at the end of the service cycle, if it gets saturated and you overrun the capacity, nothing will happen. It will just stop removing nitrate, but it's not going to do any nitrate dumping. So, so. no other chemical is uh, removing nitrate from the resin. Yes. No. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's highly nitrate selective. Yeah. If you don't use it that way, there's sulfides, for example, that could push the yeah, nitrate. I know, I know. Then we have, last but not least, we have the multi-mix. And in fact, the multi-mix, we call it a softener plus. Um, the multi-mix, as we explained earlier, it removes calcium yeah, hardness, calcium and magnesium. It removes iron manganese. Uh, it also removes uh, NOMS, so natural organic matter, and some ammonia. But in fact, it's a mixture of different filter media, so it has resin. Ah, too late? Ah, we have to stop. Ah, okay. So it's just a mixture of different filter media that we put into the tank. And after the first regeneration, after the first backwash, because they, the different filter media have a different weight, what will happen is that it will automatically form a multi-layer filter bed. And so every, um, every filter layer will have a specific, uh, specific function. Now, this is a great solution. If you have well water, you have iron, you have manganese, you have some, some hardness, you have some uh, natural organic matter, then something like the Multimix is a good solution. The Multimix is not a good solution if you would say, I only have iron, then the oxidizer is definitely better. This is kind of the all-rounder that you want to use if you have different products, if you have different uh, uh, problems and you don't want to use three or four different individual systems. So, Any questions? Thank you.